love shouting at it. So as somebody who's from this community, who's worked with youth and who understands us spiritually, where do you think fear, what's the power that fear has over our young people and how can we begin to address that in a really holistic way? To answer your question about fear, I went to this school and my last year in this school was 1983. I also started, I was exposed to a lot of different things and I became an actor right here on this stage in 1981. 82, I did my first plays here. And, um, and if I didn't have that training, I wouldn't have met Mike years later. So one of the things about fear, which is interesting, and I found that out right here in Curtis High School, because I also had a lot of fights here. So I learned a lot of hard lessons before I left this school. But the main thing that really I come to understand as a grown man is that I was in fear of not being accepted by my peers, and I didn't really realize until way after the fact that it's not something that I needed to engage in. I was ostracized for being unique and different. So how many of you guys are under 19? Raise your hand. Hi, so I can see you. Okay, so I really came here, number one, to be supportive to what this imperative is, but my second reason is to talk directly to you, people who are under 21. So when I was in Curtis, I had a very difficult time finding my way. But the one thing that Curtis gave me was exposure. And it exposed me to television production and lots of other things that allowed me to find my way a little bit later. And when you don't have any fear about who you are as an individual, that will be your saving grace. Because when you're in fear about not being accepted, or trying to fit in, or trying to do things to alleviate some of the home pressures that you may be in, it's gonna lead you into trouble. And trouble is very, very easy to get into. And sometimes you never get out of it. There are some things that I'm still paying for uh, that I did 30 years ago, energetically, spiritually, that still cause me pain and heartache. So what I say to you, the youth, you guys who are under 21, you have your whole life ahead of you and you have the time really to make really good decisions. And I would offer to all of you, learn how to play chess. How many of you guys know how to play chess? That's excellent. And what chess does for you is that it allows you to cultivate the ability to think from, to develop a long form thought, to have um, insight and look at things in depth. Instead of looking from A to D, now you can look from A to P and A to S. If I do this, then this is going to happen. If this is happening, this probably will happen. And then it tentacles out, and then it actually becomes your saving grace. So my mother made sure that I learned how to play chess, and when I really almost came to the threshold of possibly doing something where I would really have to go to jail or hurt somebody or kill somebody, the things that I learned in chess, well, if I do that, and this is going to happen, and that's going to happen, and I don't really want to do that. It caused me to kind of go back and be smart about what I was doing. So your individuality is your saving grace, and don't have any fear about who you are. And the last thing I'll say is that all of the people that I looked up to that were knuckleheads right here in Curtis High School and other places, a lot of them are dead. A lot of them are in jail. A lot of them have lots of children and they're not connected to their children. A lot of them are deadbeats. And the, ironically, a lot of them have come up to me in their own special way. And they would say, you know, I remember you when you was in um, Curtis, man. You know, yo, you, you was always a cool dude, man. Yo, I, was like, I said, really? Wow. So what that taught me was, be who you are intrinsically and authentically. Don't have any fear about who you are because there is something inside of you, right? Thank you. That God has placed only inside of you. And your journey in this life is to discover what it is. And you can possibly offer it to the world. You might change the world. Like Mike, Michael Kenneth Williams has a wonderful gift of being able to emote and being, he's a great actor, he's able to connect with an audience. And if he didn't take the pain of growing up 
and having all of the rice that he had and his trials and tribulations and really honing that. Mike definitely would be dead by now. He definitely would be in jail. I didn't get these scars on my Boy Scout route. <laughs> That's right. Don't let other people define or determine who you should be or who they think you are. Stand in your individuality and don't have any fear because all of those people that are pressuring you or that you're trying to impress eventually will say that they always respected you anyway. And I'm here with my brother, Gano Grills, my spiritual advisor, Staten Island, shout out. You already know what it is, Shaolin Island, baby. We do this, Brooklyn to Shaolin Island, all day, baby. Wu-Tang!